Well, what do you do when things in life take an unexpected turn? Where do you go when internal struggles spill over into your reality? The Bible says that in this life, we will face trouble, but there's reason to hope, for God has overcome the world. Well, today we'll learn more about walking in faith, even in difficult seasons. But first, joining me around the table is my son in love, Jonathan Weiss. How Hi. are you? I am excellent. It is an honor, as always, to be here. Thanks for having me. And we're going to share a little bit later, but the guest today has significance in your family's Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Before yeah. I was even born, significance yeah. <laughs> in my family's life. So I can't I'm wait to, to hear share that, that story. Yeah. And beside you is Rebecca Lamb Weiss. The one and only. Hello. The yes. one and all. I want to know, did, do you ever, does she ever, um, do you ever wake up to her singing songs about you? <laughs> Actually, more often than you'd think. <laughs> She is my little singer. She'll sing throughout the house, but every morning she'll just wake up with a song in her heart. It's actually quite pleasant. Oh, she gets that from her dad. You know that, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes, for sure. That's sweet. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great, and I just am so inspired to watch that twinkle in their eyes and the smile that they have when they look at each we other. We love that. When God brings two <laughs> yes, people together, yes. it's so special. And we're so excited today because Paul Kane is Ooh, here. Yes. And uh, what an honor to have you here at the table. Well, thank you. I'm, at my age and in my condition, I'm glad to be anywhere, <laughs> but especially here. Well, you look great. You look great. Yes, well, he has, <laughs> yeah. he has ministered in churches all over the United States and around the world, has been part of countless miraculous healings, yet it has been a life he could have never imagined. In fact, it was a life that almost never happened. So right. if, for those who don't know, of course, you're 89 years young, mm -hmm. and... Um, but your arrival into the world was supernatural. And it's interesting because I told you, um, our dear friend, John Paul Jackson, who's with the Lord, also had a miracle story of his birth. And uh, he used to sit right there where you're sitting and he was right. on this show many, many times. I know you loved him and he was a part of your uh, working with you early on in ministry. But let's hear your story about uh, your mother being pregnant with you, what happened? Mm. Well, it's been so many years ago, uh, 89 years ago, my mom uh, lived in Garland, Texas with my father and my sisters. And she was given up to die by the crowned heads of American medicine here in Baylor University Hospital. And they told her she had uh, cancers in both breasts that, would, uh, that was eating her breast away tuberculosis in both lungs and uh, tuberculosis mm -hmm. and cancer yes. in both breasts and I, I, even while she was carrying you her, yes. her breasts were bleeding and right. they said and, there's nothing they could do and uh, she had three large t cancerous tumors preventing my birth in her womb and they told her she'd never live near the time uh, for me to be born, that both uh, mother and child was uh, mm -hmm. doomed. And uh, she kept living. And um, did, did they just keep her in the hospital or did they send her home to die? No, they, they sent her home to die long before I was born. Mm -hmm. And here she kept growing worse. And um, so finally, uh, two Pentecostal sisters were going to be uh, uh, the assistant, I forget what they call them. Uh, like a, a nurse, a midwife? midwife. A midwife. A midwife, yeah. yeah. They were going to serve uh, as midwives. And uh, and they were Pentecostal. <laughs> yeah, they were Pentecostal. And they were praying for my mother be, to be healed and for me to be born. And uh, my dad had never seen a miracle, but he was, uh, of course, hoping that my mom would live. And... Um, so the angel of the Lord uh, came to my mom and told her that uh, she would live and not die, that uh, I would be a boy. She should name me Paul, that I would preach the gospel as did the apostle Paul of old. And she was instantly healed. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, here she hadn't been able to speak uh, in a normal voice without hemorrhaging, had to be propped up in bed. And uh, so my dad was frightened at this, and he ran across the town. We lived in a very small town, Garland, Texas, about 20 miles maybe from here. And, and uh, it was a very small town. At that it's time. not small anymore, but it was small back then. Oh, it was very small. Everybody <laughs> yeah. knew. Uh, we knew everyone by their first name. Everyone did. Yeah. So 
Anyway, my dad uh, ran across town and got uh, the family doctor that hadn't seen my mom since, um, uh, for months, uh, and she was just wasting away. So uh, he came and he was so nervous when he came in the house. Um, he said, Mrs. Kane, uh, lie down in bed and save your strength, you're, you're dying. And my mother's always had a sense of humor, and I've developed some of it. Uh, <laughs> I hope it's a gift from her. <laughs> yeah. But she says, well, doctor, I don't need any strength to die. <laughs> and if I am dying, please let me enjoy myself. Oh. <laughs> and she said, you know, um, I'm not going to die. The Lord uh, uh, has visited me and told me that I'd live and not die, and I'm going to have a baby born. And she, he, he was arguing with her and said, you, you lie down and uh, you'll see how healed you are. He didn't believe in miracles. And so he uh, forgot his little bag, the, the black bag that he carried, and he went out of the car to get that. Before he could get back into the house, I was born oh, wow. by the oh, shout of the, wow. an angel, they said. Oh, and wow. uh, uh, so the doctor was very amazed and startled. And he'd meet my dad on the, the square in a uh, small town in, of Garland. And he would say, Mr. Kane, I don't believe in miracles. My church doesn't believe in miracles. And uh, I probably never will believe in miracles. But that is the greatest miracle I've ever <laughs> seen <laughs> in my life. Wow. My mom was that is awesome. instantly healed. And she lived to be 105. Wow. She learned. She lived so, to be 105. So to answer wow. questions like, uh, do healings really last? Well, my mother's mm. healing did, and she <laughs> Amazing. lived to be 105. Wow. So when did you hear that story? When, when did your mom share it? Did she share it with you as you were growing up? Did you know you No, had... my mother was a very wise lady. She uh, didn't want to um, me to think more highly of myself or anyone to think more highly of me than they should. So she kept that from me until um, I had an experience myself. Mm -hmm. wow. And uh, But my grandmother, uh, she uh, she broke the news uh, before my mother could tell me, uh, telling me, you know, that I was uh, born to be a preacher. So tell me about that first experience you had where you knew God was speaking to you about something supernatural he's going to do with your life. Yes, well, I, I had been a member of the First Baptist Church as a little boy, and the pastor at that time uh, had uh, meetings with uh, men like the man that led Billy Graham to the Lord, Mordecai Ham. Right. So he would uh, he would take me home after service as uh, Dr. Parrish, the pastor, the then pastor of First Baptist Church in Garland. And he... Uh, he believed in Pentecost power, and he wanted my grandmother, who uh, was very gifted and was known to speak in tongues and all, he would try to get her to uh, speak in tongues. And my grandmother's a very wise person, and she said, well, Dr. Parrish, uh, I don't do command performances, you know. If you really are uh, interested, that interested in the Holy Spirit, why don't you uh, seek the Lord for yourself? and he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And then um, one night after attending a, a service where we prayed around the altar, uh, uh, the men would pray on one altar and then another altar for the women. And my sister, who was six years my senior, she was in the meeting and uh, I was kneeling praying and she was uh, with the ladies praying. and. Uh, all of a sudden, the presence of God just uh, began to um, over, overwhelm me, and I was just overcome with the conscious uh, presence of, of God in a, a, a marked way, a supernatural way. And so it scared me. I was so frightened. I went over to where my sister was kneeling and praying with the, with the other ladies, and uh, I said, would you please take me home? I'm, uh, I'll tell you what's wrong later. And on the way home, I, I told her that I was frightened, you know, that uh, the mm -hmm. presence of the Lord was uh, all over me. So when we got home, uh, we both knelt uh, by the bed, and uh, we shared the same room together. And uh, so I made my prayer short because the intensity and the awesomeness of the presence of God 
was just uh, flooding me, just overwhelming me. So I jumped in bed and she continued to pray. And the uh, Lord spoke audibly to me. And it was very frightening for um, my sister and I. We didn't have electric lights. We had uh, kerosene lanterns. And so the room was dimly lit. But when the Lord appeared, uh, there was an amber light that just filled the room and uh, very, very frightening. I pulled the cover of, over my head and wow. scared to death and shaking. And, and the Lord wow. uh, spoke, called my name and called me to the ministry and said things I've never told anyone since. And uh, my little, uh, my sister, six years older than me, she was praying, Lord, uh, hear my speak to me too. And she's had more faith in me, I guess, that she and my mother than any two people living. And she, she loved me and lived uh, in uh, all of God's presence uh, until she died a few years ago. So uh, that uh, was something that stayed with me all these years. And I've never, never been able to live a successful, sinful life because of that. <laughs> <laughs> that experience. So how old were you, Paul, when that happened? Uh, seven years You were age. seven years old? Yes. Oh, wow. So when did you start actually ministering and then the Lord began to use you in the gifts of the Spirit? Tell us about that. Well, the, the pastor uh, would take me uh, on call with him when he was called to pray for people uh, who were sick. And the pastors used to do a lot of that, you know, visiting their home. And uh, I remember one, one occasion um, I saw a vision of uh, the people we're going to pray for. And I said, the lady we're praying for um, is dying with cancer and her brother is standing at the, uh, at the foot of her bed and he has a red and black hunting shirt, uh, flannel shirt on. And this is a means that the Lord's going to heal her. And so we, when we would arrive, then he would see that it was exactly as the Lord had shown me. And the lady uh, was healed. And then he would take me uh, back uh, to the church or back home. And he would say, well, someday uh, when you grow up, uh, if you stay true to God and true to the Lord, God's going to use you in a profound way all over the world. And I never will forget that. I know, Jonathan, um, your dad shared a story with me concerning Paul Kane, and that's one of the reasons why I want you to be on the show today, because um, Paul didn't know this no. story, which is so neat that he would hear all these years later. Yeah. And I wonder if you'd share that with everyone. Absolutely. <laughs> and I was just getting a recap from my dad, um, and what was so, <laughs> what was funny to me is, so he had been saved for one month, so he was a baby Christian. And, and this he's was, Jewish. Yeah. So yeah. he was raised Jewish, and... When he, he said that after he was bar mitzvahed, he went on his uh, magical misery tour. So he tried Hinduism and Buddhism <laughs> and all these new age wow. things, trying to find out where he fit. Uh. Um, so fast forward to 1984, and he's at the church that I grew up in, Christian Life Church in Marin County. And you came to speak because it was we were in like a revival season, from what I'm told. This is mm. before I was born. <laughs> and um, mm. you asked my dad to stand up, but you called him by name. You said, there's somebody here named Miles. There's hundreds of people here. You're like, it's a very unique name, and I want you to stand up. So he stands up, and then you say, I want you to come into the aisle. So he came into the aisle, and he's like, now I want you, now you said, I want you to come forward. So my dad came forward, and then you reached over the pulpit, and you grabbed him by the hand, and he's looking for an earpiece because he thought somebody fed you his name. Because he's like, no way, this man knows my name. Uh. And so you said that, um, you have never fit in anywhere else that you've tried to, and that's because you always belonged in the body of Christ. And from this day forward, God's calling you into ministry. Mm. And from that day forward, it's over 30 years, my dad's been in ministry. He's uh, led multiple Messianic congregations. He's led tours to Israel. He's a counselor. He's a counselor, family. marriage and family counselor. Uh, you mm. mentioned that God would use him to touch many lives and be a part of a healing ministry. And like Joni mentioned, he's been a therapist mm. ever since, which has led him to touch and heal many marriages and uh, He and many your mom lives. were the host of Zola Levitt. That's right. That so, know, went around well, the world. What's so crazy is that his dad was raised in New York, you know, raised in like a Jewish household, and he 
ended up in California, was a Buddhist, was a new age, had all these spiritual experiences, but was just miserable. And then he gets saved and he's like freshly saved. Within a month. You like, he's like brand new to all this and you call him by name and he's like, oh my goodness. It was just really overwhelming for him. And his mom was overwhelmed because she said she had a revelation, like the fear of God overtook her because she says, God knows us by our names. And she started praying in tongues. And then you're like, you never fit in anywhere else because you always belonged here, which was such an wow. ample word for him because he's dedicated his life to helping Jewish people understand that they belong mm-hmm. in the body of Christ. And then they would have a son who would one day be your husband. So aren't you glad yeah. he gave him that word? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, it's really so how cool. does that bless you to hear that? Because I know you haven't probably even thought about that in years. Well, just recently I heard for some, from that church and some people oh, wow. and, and they mentioned your dad. Oh. And I think I heard from your dad not long ago. and Very likely. Uh, so um, uh, it, it makes me feel a little more fulfilled. And, yeah, that's such a uh, blessing, isn't it? Yes. I wonder if you would take just a moment, Paul, and speak to people who are watching literally mm. around the world in every continent. And just as you feel directed by the Holy Spirit, would you just speak to them and encourage them today? Yes, well, uh, I'll do my best. I, uh, I believe that everyone that's looking this way for help, God is looking your way. Yes. And uh, he wants to do something for you, possibly more than you want him to help you. And I pray God will surely visit you and he'll fight for you today. And the battle is the Lord's. And God is making himself so real to his people all over the world. And I believe he wants to make himself real to you. And I I feel like a lady is watching. You're uh, initiating a divorce and and you're using um, everything uh, to encourage this to happen. And uh, I pray that you'll just see your husband's side of this and that you will let God heal this domestic situation and bring peace. Even though your children are grown, uh, this is no time for divorce. It's time for understanding and living understanding and forgiveness of one another. So I pray, Lord, that you'll just yes. visit yes. every home, yes. the head of the house and every husband and every wife and bring peace and tranquility to these children that are involved and those that have cancer that may be looking this way for help today. Will you visit them? Will you touch them? And take your glory, Lord, for healing people all over the world this very moment. We give you praise, almighty God, in the name of your only begotten Son, Heavenly Father, your Son, your only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray you'll make yourself real and make them well today. And may they shout glories and hallelujahs for deliverance will have come in the name of the Savior and Deliverer of the world. Take your glory, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 I really believe that, and especially for you who are watching and you know that word was for you, I just pray that you would heed the word of the Lord because God is gonna supernaturally Mm -hmm. touch your heart and allow you to do something that you did not think you had the the strength to do. It's going to happen for you. I believe that. For the people who are at home, you know, who are hearing this, that God can work like this for the very first time, and for all those who are curious, how does someone who maybe has never heard from God before, how would you tell them how they can hear from God, how Hmm. they go about that? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, I hope I can have a very good answer. (laughs) But uh, I believe if we seek the Lord with all of our heart, and we want to be used to the Lord for all uh, the right reasons, for his glory and honor, that he will visit uh, these people and he'll visit you and he will uh, grant you the desires of your heart. I know that one of the things that's really on your heart, because we don't have a lot of time left, is the end time revival. Right. What has God shown you about what is about to happen? I've just seen in the vision God... Uh, uh, as a great beachcomber, uh, things that wash up on the beach are so broken and so in pieces 
that the great beachcomber can take and, and uh, put these things together again and bind them together again. And I feel like the, the last day move of God, nothing is going to be overlooked. God is going to heal from the least to the greatest. And he is going to visit people with um, unprecedented power. And the church is going to become so uh, pure and so powerful in unprecedented ways that uh, yes. the power of Pentecost will be unprecedented in the last days from one end of the earth to the other. And who, uh, whosoever, as the scripture says, shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved and deliverance is, uh, has come in the name of the Savior, the healer and the deliverer of the world. So God is uh, on the move and uh, we need to move toward him and uh, he will open his hand. If we'll stop asking him for what we can get from him, mm. uh, like Job, you know, and all of uh, the things that happened to him, not once did Job ever say, why, Lord, why is this happening to me? So Job threw himself open for an experience rather than an, ex an explanation. And so God gave him twice as much of everything because of uh, his stance because of his uh, posture on uh, not asking God why. So I just say to the, the audience, uh, uh, you who are listening in and looking this way for help, that you will uh, not ask the Lord or inquire of the Lord, why, are, why do you have the cancer? Why are you sick? And just remember that God gave Job more, twice as much of everything because he didn't ask for an explanation. Mm. He had an experience, and so can you. And I pray God will give you the experience of a lifetime. Save your house, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And God will surely visit you to heal you and, and raise you up for a testimony to give him glory. So we ask God just to take yes. his glory yes. from this uh, moment everyone that's experiencing power, yes. Pentecost power with God, that you will take your glory for the healings and for the miracles yes. in Jesus' name, yes. amen. 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 I know that you shared earlier how you felt uh, the Lord had shown you about something about Daystar. Um, how, how do you see Daystar? Has the Lord shown you anything about uh, the direction, et cetera? Well, I really feel, as I said earlier, that... Uh, God has raised you up for such a time as this that you will be one of the uh, uh, one of the ministries that will, in a very large way, be able to um, announce to the world that this is it, that this is the move of God, and this is the last touch of God upon the entire human race. And uh, I think uh, this revival. The end time revival is at the door. We've never been this close before, and it's, uh, it's going to spring forth. Even now it shall spring forth. And I just see you as an intricate part that uh, this star has been called of God to be a divine announcer uh, of uh, these soon coming events. Amen, amen. I wonder, Becca, if you just take 30 seconds and encourage people who want to experience the presence of God. They're really hungry for that. How, how the Lord has shown you uh, that everyone can experience that closeness. Absolutely. Jesus wants every person, any person can come before him because of what he did on the cross. And God's greatest desire is to be with you. You know, one phrase that's repeated through the Bible is God says, they will be my people and I will be their God. So God is looking for a people and you can join that. And when you receive salvation, you come into the body of Christ. You become a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God. And so I wanna encourage you that God has opened up and made the way through Jesus for you to come before him. And it says in Hebrews that we can go boldly before the throne of God and receive the grace and mercy we need. And so it really is simple, like Paul was talking about earlier, and the simplicity and the humility and just really seeking God with all your heart. But when you begin to seek God and seek him above all, all else, 
you will actually begin to see how much God wants to be with you and you'll see God's great love for you, his design. You'll begin to understand your identity, who you truly are in Christ. And I just wanna encourage you that as you seek him, you will find the deepest desires of your heart fulfilled because he is your deepest desire, whether you realize it or not yet. So I just wanna encourage you in humility, in simplicity, understanding that Jesus did the hard work, that you can know him and that you can simply just pray. Our prayer is talking to God. All you gotta say is, God, I'm here, I wanna know you. Humble yourself and say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I wanna know you and you'll experience God for yourself. Amen, amen. amen. There are no big eyes and little U's in the kingdom of God. God loves you so much, it's no accident that you're watching right now. And uh, Brother Paul had a word for so many of you watching. I pray that you'll just take that to heart, that you will surrender and say, okay, God, I don't understand how or when or what this is gonna, or how this is, I'm gonna do this, how it's gonna happen, but God is supernaturally going to work in a miraculous way concerning those things that you have been so concerned about. You have been going one direction and God is saying, no, it's the wrong direction. I want you to go this direction. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. So you be obedient. Well, we are out of time and I wanna thank Paul Kane for joining us at the table. Yes. Uh, what a blessing that he has been. What a blessing for me personally and all of us sitting here at the table. Mm -hmm. For more from Paul, you can visit him online at yes. paulkane.com. If you're watching today and you need a touch from God, you need healing or restoration in any area of your life, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We have prayer partners standing by 24-7, ready to take your call. If you do happen to, uh, to get a voicemail, leave your name and number. I promise you, we will call you back. You can also go to daystar.com and click on prayer because we pray over every prayer request that comes into Daystar. Also, don't forget to join the conversation online by leaving us a comment on Facebook or Twitter. We always love hearing how Table Talk has touched your life, especially for those of you that you say, that was a word for me. I want you to let me know about it so we can just agree in prayer with you for the miracle. Thank you so much for watching. And Paul Kane, you're always welcome. I hope you'll get to come back again and be with us. And Thank I'm excited you. to see how God is going to use uh, the, the latter years of your life for His glory. Mm. Thank you for being here. Thank you for Thank watching. You. Thank you, everyone, around the table. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today. Amen. This has been a Daystar Television production.